Attack, retaliation, attack, retaliation, an ongoing cycle that seems to never end. The current violence in Sweden has the country in a chokehold. We now know that opposing gangs are feuding with each other, but there is much more to the horrific situation in Sweden that is taking place as you're watching this video right now. Two men that were part of the same gang and trusted each other greatly are now sworn enemies. Trust has turned into hate. Hate that runs so deep that one decided to do the unthinkable, take out his enemy's mother. Such acts obviously cannot go unpunished, though no one could have guessed the magnitude of what was about to come. This is the story of the Foxtrot fallout. After my previous video about Rawa Majid that explained the basics about who he is and what he's involved in, it's only right to dive deeper into his life and all that's been going on in Sweden. Because besides the many enemies Rawa has made in opposing gangs, trouble has also been brewing within his own Foxtrot gang. In the past few months, it seems like his gang wasn't as tight as they used to be. A conflict had arisen within the gang itself, which led to members turning against each other. Ismail Abdo, also known as Strawberry, once a close confidant of Rawa and labelled as his right-hand man, has allegedly broken with Rawa after a personal dispute. I will later explain how he got this interesting nickname, but first let me provide you with a bit of backstory of who Ismail is and how this feud has erupted. So who is Ismail Abdo, aka Strawberry? Ismail played an important role in the handling of narcotics for the Foxtrot gang. He was previously convicted of weapons possession and serious narcotic offences, among many other convictions. In 2016, he was sentenced to five and a half years in prison. He was released after serving two-thirds of his sentence on November 10th, 2019. Ismail quickly fell to his old ways and started drug smuggling again. Since September 2022, he has been detained in absentia on suspicion of very serious narcotic smuggling involving 100 kilos of amphetamine, among other things. He has, however, fled to Turkey and has become a Turkish citizen, evading his arrest. There have been several theories speculated about the feud in the news and by the police. There are three that seem most likely and according to the police can be backed up with small bits of evidence. Potential reason number one is a missing shipment or a shipment that has gone wrong. This led to discussions between Rawa and Ismail about what exactly happened and who was responsible for this. These discussions then led to where we are today. Potential reason number two is that there were internal disagreements about the methods of violence that were exerted. The use of young boys as soldiers, the increasingly more common practice of attacking innocent family members, as well as the victims being innocent civilians a bit too frequently. Potential reason number three is a bit of a wild one. It speculates that Rawa set up his own couriers to be ripped so that he could earn more money on the same batch of product. This reason also shows that the problems between the two started way earlier this year. This may sound a little weird, so let me explain. In an extremely extensive case in which the trial is still ongoing, six people are accused of, among others, aggravated robbery, aggravated drug crime, and unlawful deprivation of freedom. During an arrest on the 16th of January this year, a number of suspects tried to escape the police in a car. Several men were arrested, one of which was a 24-year-old man. He was a familiar face of the police and wore a fox ring, meaning that he belonged to the closer circle of Rawa Majid. Together with the others, he was suspected of trying to get their hands on a 46 kilogram batch of cannabis by attacking and robbing Foxtrot's own courier. That courier in turn received his orders from someone called Dr. Phil, a chat name who police have been able to link to Ismail Abdo. The police had this theory that Rawa Majid ordered the group to rip the courier, put him in debt, and make it responsible for Rawa to sell the narcotics again. The courier in question was arrested sometime later and said some interesting things during his interrogation. They were enemies of Dr. Phil and wanted to steal the stuff. It's like they want to set me up. I'm the one who ends up in the middle of nowhere, the courier said. When the interrogator asked the courier if he knew why they wanted to trick the person behind the Dr. Phil alias, he said, they are his enemies and want to put him out of business. There must be someone in Dr. Phil's network playing a double game. The charges against the potential rippers reached the court in late August. Interestingly enough, about two weeks after this court session, the latest wave of violence is said to have begun. Could this be the real reason behind the feud? It is unlikely that the media nor the police will ever find out the real reason behind the feud. That's something only Rawa and Ismail will ever know for sure. At first glance, what do you think? What's the reason that makes the most sense? Let me know in the comments. Whatever the real reason may be that caused the splits, the consequences would be felt throughout Sweden and beyond. A ruthless battle ensued, and everything seemed to be justified. 
because these men were so close to each other, they knew exactly what one's weak points were and where their closest family members were located. Especially the latter would prove highly valuable in an attempt to win this battle. Here are the most notable incidents. It all started with a shooting in Istanbul on the 6th of September 2023. The shooting was allegedly ordered by Ismail and was aimed to take out Rawa. It was all caught on camera. CCTV footage showed two men arrive on a moped. One of them hopped off and fired several shots towards five or six people, one of which was supposedly Rawa. Without hesitation, these people fired back. No one was seriously injured, but it was immediately clear that retaliation would shortly follow, and so it did. Allegedly, this attack resulted in an immediate revenge just a day later, on the 7th of September. The 60-year-old mother of Ismail Abdo was taken out in her own home in Uppsala. Even though we've seen a lot of unprecedented lows already in Sweden, this is a good depiction of just how ruthless Rawa and his gang were. Not even someone's mother was safe. After this incident, there was officially no turning back. It was bound to get way worse. A 19-year-old and a 15-year-old were arrested for the hit shortly after. When asked if he feared retaliation after this incident, police commissioner Jonas Eronen said, we are extremely vigilant about what may happen now. We are using all the resources we have to prevent possible retaliation. As a safety measure, we will keep an eye on homes we may think house people of interest. This was to no avail, because just two days after the hit on Ismail's mother, there was retaliation again. This time, it was Rawa Majid's mother-in-law. A man repeatedly knocked on her door, however nobody opened. After a few minutes, the man shot at her apartment and fled. Had she opened that door, she would most likely not have survived. Questions were immediately asked. The police commissioner said that they would keep an eye on the homes of people of interest. Wasn't Rawa's mother-in-law a person of interest? You say you check addresses, so how can such a shooting take place? The mother-in-law said, shocked and terrified during an interview, adding, obviously it was directed at me. I'm not stupid. I'm someone who never cries, but now I'm so scared. The commissioner replied by saying, we have addresses where we are present as best as we can, but unfortunately we cannot be everywhere which is definitely a fair point. The feud is so extensive. According to the police, they have a list of approximately 150 addresses that could be targeted next. It seems to be an impossible task to guard each and every potential victim. The same night, explosives were found near the home of one of Rawa's confidants. With the rising amount of brazen attacks, it was only a matter of time before someone unrelated to the feud would become the victim. That became the case on the 12th of September, Police were alerted about an incident that took place where a man had been taken out in the stairwell of a building where he lived. Upon further investigation, it was determined that the man named Mogos did not have any connection to the conflict and was just an innocent civilian that was at the wrong place at the wrong time. The intended target was a family member of Rawa that lived in the same building. This incident was quickly followed by yet another shooting on the 13th of September around 3.45 at night. It was once again aimed at a family member of Rawa. However, despite firing several shots, the shooter did not succeed as his target managed to flee. Police arrived to the scene quickly and managed to arrest the shooter, which was once again a young boy. Later that day, an explosive was found in the same area. A resident spotted it and called the police who defused the explosive on site. Then, around 9 in the morning on the same day, 19-year-old Giovanni was taken out in Vasastaden in central Stockholm. According to information from the police, he was linked to Rawa and managed drug sales in Havla. It is said that he was in Stockholm to hide, as he was a target in the internal Foxtrot conflict. Unfortunately for him, that did not help. Just a day later, numerous shots were fired at the door of a flat in the Hagby district of Norhoping. According to the media information, the target was the mother of one of the men arrested in Turkey after being involved in the Istanbul shooting. Then, on the 15th of September, a powerful explosion took place at an apartment complex in Uplands, north of Stockholm. A very close confidant of Rawa Majid lived in this apartment complex. An explosion took place at the same gates in late January this year. Could that be another indication that the feud already started in January? On the 27th of September, there was yet another innocent victim. A major explosion took place in Uppsala, destroying several homes. The intended target was once again a relative of Rawa. Instead, a 24-year-old woman who lived in a neighboring house and had nothing to do with the ongoing conflict did not survive the blast. She was soon to be a teacher with a bright future ahead of her. It was total devastation. Two houses had major damage and windows were smashed at various houses on the streets, a witness stated. 
Another witness said, everything was ruined. The entire outer wall disappeared and the adjacent house was also completely demolished. It must be said that there have been many, many more incidents involving bombings and shootings. However, Swedish police could not link those incidents to the feud of Rawa and Ismail just yet, as they need further evidence. They do think that it is most likely that a big majority of those attacks were linked to this feud. These insane amounts of violence, paired with the total ruthlessness, caused those directly involved to flee the country. Some of their family members and other relatives did so as well for their own safety. I can't sleep at night because I don't know if my front door is going to explode or if someone crazy is going to enter and shoot us. We're absolutely terrified, said an anonymously interviewed family member who has nothing to do with the feud except being family to someone involved. In the entire month of September, there had been 11 fatal shootings, many of which were attributed to the feud between Rawa and Ismail. It marked the worst month for the country since recordings began in 2016. You may have noticed that most of the recorded attacks were coming from Ismail, not Rawa. Investigators started questioning Rawa's strength and that of his Foxtrot gang. Here's why. Rawa fled to Turkey somewhere around 2020. Here is where he brought himself Turkish citizenship through the so-called Golden Passport Program. With this program, Turkey offers citizenship in turn for an investment of $400,000. This money can be invested into the economy via real estate, for example. There are not a lot of questions asked when applying. You just have to be who you say you are. Keep that in mind. Making it rather interesting for criminals to apply because being a Turkish citizen offers a lot of perks. First and foremost, in general, Turkey does not extradite their citizens. If a criminal becomes wanted in their country, he or she can feel relatively safe in Turkey. This counts specifically for Swedish criminals, as Turkey and Sweden do not have a formal extradition agreement, shrinking the chances of being extradited even more. Secondly, a criminal is most likely safer in Turkey, being far away from their enemies, the shooting in Istanbul being an outliner, of course. Turkey is a true safe haven, and for a wanted man such as Rawa Majid, this is a good hideout. Sweden had already remanded Rawa in absentia several times, but they wanted to get him in court. Officials said they do not have high hopes of seeing him in Swedish court anytime soon due to his Turkish citizenship. However, this hope might have increased after they heard the news that there was an ongoing legal case against Rawa that could cost him his citizenship. According to the legal case, Rawa had registered himself under a false name for the Turkish citizenship, alluding to potential forgery. He applied as Miran Otman. According to the case, he did so because if he applied under his real name, Rawa Majid, he would pop up as one of Sweden's most wanted people and would potentially be denied Turkish citizenship. This case got a new impulse after the shooting incident on the 6th of September in Istanbul. The negative press caused a lot of eyes looking at the situation critically and could be the potential catalyst for the change in Turkey. If he loses the case, Turkey could potentially withdraw his citizenship, leaving him up for extradition. The person is then often sent back to where he came from, which in this case would be Sweden. The question is, will he lose his citizenship? Well, stay with me. It is assumed that Rawa is protected by high-level figures within the Turkish police and government. A prime example of that was the highly confidential information about Rawa that Sweden sent to Turkey, which immediately was shared with him, just to give an example. Then, out of nowhere, news broke. Rawa Majid had allegedly been arrested on October the 5th while passing the border into Iran, according to SVT. They based the news on multiple independent sources that all confirmed it. According to the information, the arrest took place in connection to some kind of traffic control stop, and it may be false ID documents that led to his arrest. I say allegedly because, was it true? Thus far, Swedish police nor their Ministry for Foreign Affairs have confirmed the news. There is no evidence in terms of pictures or video footage that shows Rawa being arrested or in handcuffs, like there were when he was arrested briefly in Turkey. Shortly after the news broke, Prime Minister Ulf Kristersson was quickly interviewed and told that he received the information but could not confirm it yet. People close to Rawa immediately denied the news. All in all, lots of contradicting details were circulating. The overall consensus is that if Rawa was arrested, he may have been detained briefly but was released shortly after for thus far unknown reasons. Either way, all the tumults did not really benefit Rawa since he was still engaged in a full feud with Ismail Abdo. Instead of being able to fully focus on the feud, he had to worry about other problems, significantly weakening his position. To make matters even worse, one of Rawa's alleged stash houses was raided on the 6th of October. When police raided the industrial premises, 
they found drugs worth 32 million kroner, approximately 2.7 million euros. In the phone of one of the suspects, police found pictures showing him wearing a fox ring on his finger. During an interrogation, he said that he found that ring at the kiosk and decided to keep it. Was this Rawa's stash house? It could have been another blow to his organization. Then, an interesting article was published mid-October, in which an anonymous member of the Foxtrot gang touches on the reason for the feud, the current state of it, and the frequent use of young boys as soldiers. The anonymous member said that there were two reasons for the escalation. One was the shooting in Turkey, and the second reason was the hit on Ismail Abdo's mother. Just because the wind is blowing a bit the other way, I don't sell my friends for money. It will only get worse. For every affected family, 10 more will be affected. I could have brought Rawa to the people for 50 million. People offered 20 million. I could have sold him out already, but I am a man, and I will never do that. Most likely referring to the fact that he could give up Rawa's location to Ismail for said amounts of money. In regards to the young boys being used as soldiers, he said, A 15-year-old can take out one person, or he can take out 100 people and get four years of closed juvenile care. It has become trendy to have people of that age. They see people with chains, they see 15 and 16 year olds getting money, there is nothing else to do. On whether he thought it was okay to use these young boys as soldiers, he said, I don't think it is right, but you have to. And finally, on the question when it would end, he answered, never, until Strawberry gives up. Most of you will probably have the same thought at this exact moment. Neither side is giving up anytime soon, and you are absolutely right about that. Just five days later, a large industrial building was set afire at around 2 at night on the 15th of October. The fire brigades did not stand a chance against this fire, which was meters high. They had to make the decision to let the entire 5,000 square meter building burn to the ground. Police were more familiar with the scene, they had been there before. In January, there had already been a big explosion at the front door of the building. So, who was connected to this address? Ismail Abdo. The large industrial building was home to a company dealing in fruit and vegetables, allegedly belonging to his family. Remember Ismail's nickname, Strawberry? That's where he got his name from. A noteworthy detail is that according to speculation, the warehouse was also used as a stash house for his narcotics. Could this be retaliation for what happened to Rawa's stash house? Police press spokesperson Daniel Wikdal could not confirm nor deny that this incident had anything to do with the ongoing feud between Ismail and Rawa. For most of the people, it was clear. This had 100% to do with the feud, and once again, retaliation was bound to follow shortly. It's clear that this feud is far from over. I mean, at the time of writing this, and the day this video will be posted, I can ensure there will be many more incidents related to this feud. But, who will win? And more importantly, at what cost? With Rawa Majid lying low after his alleged arrest, his new right-hand man has taken the foreground. This man is called Mustafa al Jibori and I can tell you, the video about him that I'm currently working on is about to get absolutely insane. Be sure to subscribe and stay up to date on this one. Meanwhile, back in Sweden, gangs that were once loyal to Rawa have now pledged their allegiance to Ismail. For example, the Zero Network has allegedly switched sides and now work with Ismail instead of Rawa. What hasn't helped either is that several of Rawa's associates have allegedly been arrested in Tunisia this past week. Is Ismail becoming stronger than Rawa? Or is something brewing, and will Rawa and Mustafa strike back viciously? By the time you are watching this, I'm already working on a follow-up video. For now, all I can say is be sure to subscribe to the channel so you will not miss a thing. Plus, it would be really helping the channel. We're almost at 100,000 subs. Don't forget to like the video if you have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.